Howdy everybody, Professor Martin here coming to you live from Wilmington, Ohio, where it is the second day of our spring break at the college and looking at the thermometer, it's about 34 degrees outside. So uh, happy spring break, nothing uh, better to do on a day like today than sit inside and talk about managerial accounting, right? So today I want to talk about what is managerial accounting. Yeah, when you signed up for your classes, you probably noticed 1101 accounting was financial accounting. 1102 is managerial accounting. So what the heck is the difference between the two? That's what we're going to cover today. So hopefully by the end of our video today, you kind of have a good understanding of where we've been in financial accounting and where we're going in managerial accounting. Let's get right to it. There we go. Today's video, the topic du jour, financial accounting versus managerial accounting. Now, i talk a little bit about myself here real quick. Uh, I, I have one vice in my life right now. It's not alcohol. I don't drink. I don't use tobacco. I don't eat a lot of junk food like candy bars and that kind of thing. My vice is soda pop. I'm a big Mountain Dew guy. And, and growing up, my dream was to have enough money where I could have a little refrigerator full of soda. And I've uh, achieved all the goals I've set out to achieve in my life, basically. Love Mountain Dew, a big cream soda guy. Love root beer. Uh, not so much like cola, like Pepsi and Coke, but uh, Mountain Dew is right down my alley. And I uh, know it's not good for me. I just can't help myself. That's kind of my hobby is drinking soda, as pathetic as that might sound. Uh, so I was super excited. I was out in Utah uh, for summer vacation last year. And in Utah, a big thing out there, I didn't know this, but a big thing is a soda stand. And, and the little soda stands will be all over Utah. And basically, you can go to these places and they'll make you a fountain soda and they'll put extra stuff in it. Like they'll put uh, flavored syrups in it. They'll put fruit puree in it and mix it all together. And I found one of these in Moab, Utah. And we're getting ready to drive out to Canyonlands National Park and hike around. I was like, hey, check this place out. So I went to Lop's Pop Stop in Moab, Utah. And I got a Buckeye. Now, a Buckeye was a Mountain Dew with blueberry syrup, blackberry syrup, and strawberry fruit puree all mixed in. And it was amazing. And the whole time I'm driving out to Canyonlands, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, this wasn't that hard. If you look at that place, it's just a, a shed, basically, with a fountain pop machine in it, bottles of syrup. I, I could bring this idea to Wilmington. So my dream has become to start my own kind of pop business in Wilmington. And I already have the perfect location. If you're familiar with Wilmington, there's a little Valentine Diner uh, that is near the library, kind of right across the street from the library there in downtown Wilmington. And I, I thought that would be the perfect place to create what I'm going to call Swiggies. And it's going to be a pop stand. You can go in there and you can get a drink mixed up any way you want it. It'll be great. Do all kinds of business. Okay, that was the dream. But sometimes you got to pump the brakes on your dreams and think, well, hang on here. Could I really make any money doing that? There's some questions I have to answer before I start my dream there. The things I need to know before I start that kind of a, a business. First of all, what's it cost me to make a drink? You know, you've got the, uh, obviously the ingredients. I'd have the uh, syrup for the pop the different flavored syrups that we put into it, the fruit puree, uh, lids, I'd have cups, I'd have straws, ice, all that stuff obviously goes into making a drink, but you got to think beyond that. I'd have to lease the building, I'd have to pay utilities, I'd have to pay wages to the workers, I'd have to have insurance, I'd have all kinds of other expenses that would have to be factored into the cost of making a drink. And so I'd have to figure all that up. And then once I know pretty much what it takes me to make a drink, what am I going to sell it for? Am I going to just take that cost and mark it up 10%? Am I going to look at my competitors? Am I going to look at Kava House and say, hmm, Kava House is selling coffee and teas and drinks for four or five bucks. And you look at Speedway, I can go to Speedway and get a fountain pop for 89 cents. And so there's qualitative competitive things I'm going to look at too in trying to figure out that selling price. And then finally, how many do I even need to sell? Let's say I wanted to make a profit of 10,000 bucks a month. 
Can I even sell enough drinks in our little town of Wilmington here to get to that point? So all kind, uh, kinds of questions that I'd have to figure out. And that's where managerial accounting comes in. Your book defines managerial accounting as a branch of accounting that aids uh, our management in making financing, investing, and operating decisions for the company. Now, operating decisions are those day-to-day -day things. Uh, what kind of products am I going to sell? How much am I going to sell them for? How are we going to staff the business? What are we going to pay our workers? All of those are operating decisions, the day-to-day -day operations of our business. Financing, how are we going to get the money to do it? We're going to borrow from the bank. I'm going to put up my own money. And then investing decisions. Am I going to buy that building? Am I going to lease it? Am I going to buy the equipment? Am I going to lease the equipment? And those long-term purchasing decisions that kind of impact numerous years in accounting periods. So managerial accounting generates the information that helps us make all those decisions in our business. So think back to financial accounting. You all spent a lot of time in 1101 making journal entries. And then you take all those journal entries and you'd make financial statements out of them. And we got PepsiCo here. We have their income statement. Shows the amount of net income, profit that they've earned. Very important financial statement. Uh, Swiggy's could make the exact same financial statement after they were in business for a while. And we could see the amount of profit that Swiggy's made as well, or any business for that matter. Uh, but when we look at that financial statement, it's looking backwards, isn't it? Here's the profit we made during the year that just ended, or the quarter that just ended, or the month that just ended. And so it's an important document, but it's really not going to tell us a lot about our day-to-day -day operations and managing our business. It's more looking backwards to see where we've been and how we've done. We also made a balance sheet in our uh, financial accounting classes in 1101. And you remember that was really the first financial statement that we made. Assets equal liability plus equity. You all remember the accounting equation, hopefully. And again, and we could make that financial statement in Pepsi for our little soda stand here in Wilmington. Uh, and it's gonna be kind of looking backwards, not really a forward looking document. So when we look at financial accounting and we compare it to managerial and we look at a few different ways that they differ, the purpose of financial accounting and managerial accounting are different. In financial accounting, where we're making those journal entries, where we're doing those financial statements, we're looking in the rearview mirror. We're looking backwards. We're saying, okay, here's what happened in the past year or quarter or whatever time period you want to think of. In managerial accounting, it's more of a roadmap. We're looking at where we want to go. We're planning things out and controlling what happens as it happens. And so it's two different perspectives right there. The timing of the info, like I said, financial accounting, we're looking backwards on those financial statements. In managerial accounting, we're looking forward. We're forecasting sales. What are my sales going to be for next month? What's my labor budget? What's my material budget for next month? So managerial accounting is very much a forward-looking game we're playing. In financial accounting, we have a rule book we follow. It's called GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. So all those rules we talked about, accounting-wise and accounting 1101 financial accounting, that came from that playbook of GAAP. may not have known it at the time, but that's really what we were talking about. We were talking about generally accepted accounting principles. In managerial accounting, we don't really have a formal rule book that we play by. We have best practices. We have ways that things kind of ought to be done, but you're not going to get in trouble if you don't do them that way. No government entity or body is going to come in and fine you if you don't do your managerial accounting according to some rule book because it doesn't exist. The focus in financial accounting, if you go back and look at the Pepsi financial statements, it says consolidated. All the different companies that Pepsi owns, all the different lines of business, all combined into one financial statement. So in financial accounting, we're looking at the whole company. Managerial accounting, we can break it down however we want to. We can break it down by product line. We can break it down by department. We can break the information down by location. All kinds of different things that we can do uh, to get the information that we need or want to make decisions. 
Who uses financial accounting? You think about who we're generating that information for when we make that income statement and balance sheet? Normally, it's for people outside of the business, external. It's for an investor who wants to maybe buy stock in Pepsi. It's for the bank that maybe has lent Swiggy's money and they want to see the financials to make sure that, they're, uh, that we're profitable. And so the financial accounting focus is for people who are external to the business so they can make a decision about investing or loaning money to the business. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is internal to the company. People external to the company never see the managerial accounting. I never see Pepsi's managerial accounting because that's internal to the company. It's being used by the managers to make decisions on where the business is going. And then finally, there's certifications. You can actually get certifications in both. In financial accounting, there's the CPA, and you've probably heard of that, Certified Public Accountant, and most commonly known uh, certification in accounting. But there's also a certification in managerial accounting called the CMA. And a lot of people think CMA stands for Country Music Awards. No, 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 no. It's Certified Managerial Accountant. And if you uh, kind of gravitate towards the stuff, if we get through the book here and you're like, man, I kind of dig the managerial accounting stuff. You don't have to be a CPA to get a CMA. That's actually a standalone certificate. So you wouldn't get a degree, uh, maybe in business or maybe in accounting or whatever, and you decide that you really like managerial accounting and you can get a certificate in that. Uh, certification. And I'll tell you, people that have the CMA tend to do very, very well salary-wise and perks-wise in industry. And those people usually kind of rise up to the level of controller uh, or higher, VP of finance or whatever in manufacturing settings and that kind of thing. So uh, it's a very lucrative field to get into. Uh, if you like the stuff we're talking about in 1102, they want to make a career out of it. You don't really like the journal entry stuff in financial accounting. Uh, it could be a, a nice route for you uh, for a career. So the big picture that we're looking at here, different ways managerial accounting information is gathered and used in business. That's going to be the recurring theme as we go through uh, the final few weeks here in our class in 1102. If you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out. That's just kind of a quick introduction, the difference between financial accounting and managerial accounting. And we'll get into more specifics as we go along. We'll see you next time.